I'm going to show you five simple steps that you can implement literally in the next hour that is going to help you scale your Amazon ads, making them more profitable, making you more sales and decreasing the time you need to spend on Amazon PPC. I'm Dr. Travis Ziegler. I'm the CEO of Profitable Pineapple Ads. We're an ads agency, but that's not why I'm here today. I am here for you to show you a simple way to analyze the data. There's so much data that we can look at out there, but I'm going to show you probably the most important data set here today. So this is something that was not my strong suit. I used to manually do what I'm going to show you today. And I'm actually going to show you the manual way to do this at the end of the video, but I'm going to show you a lot faster of a way and don't let this term scare you away. It's called a pivot table. A pivot table is something you can use in Excel and Google sheets to make data, a lot of data or to take data and a lot of data, and then pretty much organize it in a couple clicks of the button. Now I was not the expert in this and I still am not the expert in it, but I brought people on the show today that are experts in it. And so they're going to show me how to create a pivot table. And so essentially you can put this video on one side of your screen while you're doing it on the other side of your screen. And you can literally follow along with them instructing me and you'll see what I'm typing and everything. And so what I want you to do is pull this video up beside it and do it with the, do it with me on as I'm doing it. And as I'm getting instructed to do it, we do mess up a couple of times, but it shows you that we, it, it is, it is real. And that's, that's what we're doing now after this video is over. The pivot table video is around 10 minutes long. After that video, I put a second video at the end of this, and that is the manual way that I do things. And so if you want to go back to manual way and you don't want to do pivot tables, you can go back because because I do have a video on that. And so you can check that video out. It's going to be at the end. All right, well, let's jump in. All right, so here we are seeing my screen. What I'm going to show you here is how to download the sponsored products search term report. And then we're also going to download the advertised product report. We're also going to get your business report. This is pretty much your sales to figure out the 80, 20 of your products, the 20% of your products that are producing 80% of your revenue. And then you're going to see how we turn those into a pivot table. Now, don't be scared of the word pivot table. I brought on experts with Jordan and Randy. They're actually going to teach me you know, how to create a pivot table. I have never created a pivot table in my life but we're gonna show you how easy it is. And hopefully we'll do it so slow that you can follow right along with this video while you have your pivot table open and you guys can create it right next to it. We'll also save these formulas for you um, and hopefully you can get them to work in your pivot table, but you can always ask us questions down below. So let me first download the reports. So we're gonna to go to business reports first and you're just gonna to go to your regular seller central, come over here, go to reports and business reports right here. After you do that, this is going to come up right here. You're going to scroll all the way down here to detail page sales and traffic. You're going to see you have your parent, your child, and we're going to go back a full 12 month date range. Um, mostly what we're doing here is just trying to see what products are selling the most, what products are selling the least. And you, we're going to find the 20% of your products that are producing 80% of your results. That's the goal of this business report. And so just go back to the date a year from when we're recording this, and then you're just going to hit download. So that's downloading right now. It looks like it's already done. We're going to come over here and do the sponsored products reports. So same thing. We're in campaign manager this time. And in campaign manager, you're going to scroll down to measurement and reporting, and you're going to click sponsored ad reports right here. When you do that, this screen will pop up right here. I'm going to go to create report, sponsored product, search term report. Instead of last 30 days, we're just going to go back as far as we can. The more data, the better. And that's just what we're doing here. And then go all the way. You can leave an attribution window here, but we're not going to worry about that for simplicity purposes. You have all this here. Leave it alone. Hit run report. That will start to run. While that's running, we're going to go back to the report screen. So measurement and reporting, sponsored ads report, and we're going to get the other one. So if you forget which one you need, search term report, advertised product report. So we're going to go to create report, sponsor products. Instead of search term, we're going to do advertise product report. Same thing, go back as far as we can. So we get a little bit more data with this one and then run a report. Okay, we're going to go back to reports. You can also click this icon if you don't want to go all the way back here. I just wanted to show you again. You can click this one and you can see that these two are downloading. This one's still working. This one's ready to download, so we'll download that one. While we're waiting on this one, we're gonna upload it to our spreadsheet. So let's come over here. We're first gonna upload the business report. 
So I'm going to click on business report. I'm going to go up here to file. Import. Come all the way over here to upload. Go to browse. Business report. I don't want to create a new spreadsheet. I just want to put it into this spreadsheet. So we're going to replace the current sheet. Hit import data. You can see that all comes in. Let's go to the advertised product report. Same thing. File, import. Come all the way over here to upload. Browse, sponsor product advertising report. Double click. Replace. Uh, it's not going to let me replace. We're going to insert a new sheet. And then what we'll do is bring it back over here. Advertise product report. We'll just leave it like that. Okay, we're just gonna delete this one. All right, so we have our business report. We have our advertised product report. Now we need our search term report. So let's go back to Amazon ads. Just hit refresh. And now that one's ready. So we'll download that one. And it's downloaded, so come back here, file. Import, upload, browse, and sponsor product search term report. Same thing. I wonder why it's not letting me replace the current sheet. It must be too large or something. So we're going to hit import data. You can see there's a lot more data in this one. Bring it all the way over here. And so that's how you bring it in. Now, I've done a previous video on showing how you can manually do this and sort this table. And you can go back and do that. So manually sorting this table is going to take more time. It's also going to take a lot more work. And so for a bigger brand, this has got about 16 SKUs-ish, 16 to 70 SKUs. It depends on how you look at SKUs. Um, but for a brand that has hundreds or even thousands of SKUs, that would take forever. And you want to do this, you know, once a month or so. Just to, this is, we're doing this when we're launching a brand, but if you're looking at search term reports monthly, if you have thousands of SKUs, this is going to take forever. And that's where a pivot table comes in. That's why I have brought in Randy to help me make this pivot table. I am not an expert in this. He is actually going to teach me right here how to make the pivot table. So Randy, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is going to be exciting. Pivot tables are not scary. Think about them like a calendar. You have days of the week at the top and you have weeks going down. So this is all we're going to do. Uh, so first thing, let's we need to add the ASIN, and we need to define whether it's a product um, on this sheet here. So let's okay. go all the way to the end of this data. And then we're going to make two columns? Yes. Cool. All right, this first one can be ASIN. Actually, let's do one more column because I think we're going to bring parent in. And what's the final one? Uh, product. This is defining whether it's going to be a product or a search term. All right, Randy, what's the formula that I need for this first one? All right, do equals V lookup. OK, so we can just click this, and that will start your, it for us. Here's your open parenthesis. Now we're going to go find the element we're going to look up, which is the campaign name. And you're going to click on the same row, mm -hmm. and then do comma. Comma. Now we're going to go find, okay, we want to look that campaign name up in the advertised products. So click, so click, click on that. This sheet. Yep. And the very first column we need to highlight is the campaign name because that's where Just it starts. Sure. You can highlight E and click and drag right. over to the ASIN. Uh, nope, I missed it. Hold on. There got, we go. Okay. Right, let go. And then you do comma. And that was the fourth column. First column is our lookup. Last column is the data win pullback. So we're going to do number four. And then mm -hmm. comma, you're going to type false. False is very important because if you don't type false, it just brings back anything random close enough. False means okay. it has to be exact. So you're going to close that parenthesis and then hit enter. And then you should be able to go see that formula and copy it all the way down. And there's our ASIN. And then you can double click this little dot here and it will take it all the way down, right? Yes. Let's do cool. the parent. Same thing. Hit escape. We have to do one thing on this data before we do the parent. So go to business reports. Mm -hmm. so the only way a VLOOKUP will work is left to right. So because the parent ASIN is on the 
right side or the left side of the child ASIN, we need to move it to between. Yeah, so we can insert it. Beautiful. That's all we got to do. Okay, now back to SDR. You better coach me through this one because I already failed. All right, equals, equals VLOOKUP. Look up. Mm -hmm. Then click on Y2. Y2. You're going to look up the ASIN, comma. Comma. You're going to go over to business reports so we can get the parent, mm -hmm. ASIN, and you're going to highlight A and B, comma. You want to bring back the second column, which is the parent, number two. Number two. Comma. And you want it to be false, which means it's the exact match. Close parentheses, and then enter. And double click this. Yes. Cool. Now we can go to the product. So we want to define whether this is a product or a search term because they show up in the same column on this search term report. So do equals, open parentheses. And to define it is a product, they all start with B0. So we're going to take the first two letters, actually back that up. We're going to type left, go back, right there, left, open parentheses. Substring from beginning of specified string. Yeah. So go find the search term field. Where that search is. term field is right here, column I. Then do comma, two, close parentheses. This will bring back the first two characters of this column. And then do equals, uh, double quote. You need to double quote around the VO, that'd be zero. Comma, uh, double quote with a, a Y in, in this one, and then a comma, double quote with a no. So this is a true false statement. Is the search term for the first two characters equal B0? Yes or no? Close parentheses. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. There we go. All right. So if the left two letters of column I2 are B0, not O, but zero. Think of your ASINs. Every ASIN starts with a B0 from Amazon. Then put yes or no. True, false statement. And then that tells us whether ASINs or search terms are popping up to the top. Beautiful. S simple as that. All right, now we need to create a pivot table. Highlight all, insert pivot table, new sheet. Beautiful, you did it. This is a pivot table, blank slate. All right, so for, uh, there's several things. Like I said, it works kind of like a calendar. You have days of the week at the top and you have your weeks going down um, vertically. So you have rows and columns and- Rows, columns. Right, so for rows, let's click and drag a search term report in, or search term, customer search term into row. All right, so then columns, we'll want what? We want to scroll all the way down on that. You're going to drag in, what do you parent. want to use, Jordan? Parent or ASIN? Let's start with parent. Okay, drag parent up to columns. So that will tell us the parent ASIN. And then for values, you want to drag in the seven day orders. Orders, sorry. First, there you go. That should be able to scroll up. So because we actually need to probably sort the values. Let's search your uh, customer search term at the very top. Descending some, and then I can look at each individual just parent ASIN on this just, one. Just do a grand total. Yeah. So you'll, you'll still want to do grand, to grand total under sort by? I, I don't know why it's not working. Grand total, there we go. And then down at the bottom, you'll, you'll take the parent ASIN and you'll drag it over under filters. Is that okay. That's the filter we're going to be using. Um, and then underneath that, you can do, you can also add a filter for seven day total orders, as well as a filter for product, which is product yes or no. So this one will probably want to get rid of zero, one, two, Correct. because we're focusing on the search terms that are actually working. So unless you have a uh, search term report that has very low orders, then you can still use the one and two. Okay, we'll see if that, okay, there we go. And then now we can separate it into each parent ASIN and see which ones 
Correct. Uh, for whatever search terms are showing up for. Yeah, and you can also drag in the uh, product yes or no that we created to the filters. It's all the way down to the product right here. Yep, under filters. Yeah. And so this will give us just search terms. So if you selected yes, you're just seeing the products, mm -hmm. the product targets. So if you select no, then it's not a product, it's a keyword. Yep. So right now we're just looking at the, uh, there we go. Switch it. There we go. And then if you go under the parent ASIN mm -hmm. and you s select uh, clear, and then you just look at each one individually. Yeah, select any of the parents. Kind of provides a little bit more simplified look. We'll look at this one. And now we're just looking at one parent ASIN grand total of the orders and what's bringing us the most sales. Correct. And just to explain this, why we added parent ASIN instead of doing a specific ASIN um, is because usually if there's multiple variations under a parent, then the parent will be different than the child ASIN. If there's um, just one child ASIN under one parent, uh, no other variations, then the parent ASIN and the child ASIN are gonna be the same. Um, and this, this way we'll be able to target the keywords that are generating the most orders to the the product that is um, your best seller of those variations. And we'll get into that in a further video, but in this video, I wanted to show you how to create a pivot table and why it's so much faster and easier than if we were to sort that search term report on its own and doing it all by itself. So now that when we're going into the build for Quartile, we'll be able to individualize it for each product build out the quartile build, and then come back and do the next product all within this pivot table, this one spreadsheet. So that is why we did it. So I hope you enjoyed that video on pivot tables, and I hope that makes sense, and I hope that makes the way you look at data a little differently. I hope it helps you scale your brand a little bit more. If you just follow the steps in that, that video right there, it's going to help you analyze data and use that data to focus on the 20% of the data that's turning into the 80% of your results. When you focus on that, you save a lot of money, you save a lot of time. Now in the next video, continuing on here, you're gonna see the manual way that I do this. And so if you don't wanna do pivot tables and just wanna take a little more time, then do it the manual way. And then what we're gonna do is take the 20% of keyword search terms and ASINs that are producing 80% of our results, and then we're gonna make them into an exact match campaign and a broad match campaign to start scaling your advertising. All right, so let's jump into that video. Scaling your Amazon PPC with my 80-20 strategy. Now, Amazon PPC can be as difficult or as simple as you wanna make it. And what I commonly see when I work with clients is that you've been implementing way too many different strategies and you're now confused as to what to do next. Your ACOS is sky high, but you're not even sure what your ACOS should be. And then you don't know when you should pause keywords or just change the bid. And you don't know how to expand your campaigns to scale them. And if any of this sounds like you, you are completely normal. The simple strategy that I'm gonna teach you today will help you make more sales, increase your organic rank on Amazon, while also decreasing your ad spend inside of Amazon PPC. I can guarantee you that this is a step that your, your competition is not doing. And so what is it? It's simply mining and isolating the 20% of search terms that are producing 80% of your results. You've probably heard of Pareto's principle. So Pareto's principle just states simply that 20% of your input creates 80% of your results. So 20% of your workers produce 80% of your results, 20% of your customers create 80% of your revenue, 20% of the bugs cause 80% of the crashes, 20% of the features cause 80% of the usage. In Amazon world, 20% of your products are producing 80% of your revenue and 20% of your customer search terms are driving 80% of your sales on Amazon PPC. All we're gonna do is find and isolate and then scale those customer search terms. So what do you do with the search terms that are driving 80% of your sales? You're gonna hear me say this over and over again. I want you to put each search term into its own separate campaign, single keyword ad campaigns. Worth repeating, one search term per Amazon PPC campaign, not ad group. And if you have a limited budget, what you wanna do is make sure that you're only starting with exact match campaigns for this. And if your budget allows, then you make a broadened auto campaign and upload your negative phrase list. The reason we do this is because you can then customize every single part of the campaign for that specific product. You can customize the budget, the bidding strategy, the adjust bids by placement. You can adjust all that 
based on this one search term in this product. So this is a brief rundown of what I'm gonna run through today. I'm gonna to show you how to mine your search term report. So we're gonna download the search term report, upload it to a Google Sheet. We're gonna organize and consolidate it. We're gonna delete all the keywords that don't really matter. We're gonna separate out each product into its own tab. Then we're gonna find the 20% of search terms that are driving 80% of your results. We're gonna then upload those into an exact match campaign and watch our sales, rankings, and profits soar. So let me jump into my screen and I'll show you how to do that. So here we are inside my campaign manager. And what we're gonna do is come up here and we're gonna to go to reports. Once in reports, we're gonna pull our sponsored product search term report. So we're gonna come up here to create report, sponsored products, search term, summary. I like to go back 60 days and leave a little bit of attribution. What that means is I'll show you here. We're gonna go from November 14th through January 14th. And so we're gonna leave just a couple days here because of today's date. And we're gonna hit save. You can name it if you want and send it to an email if you want, but then you're gonna click we'll run report. Once it's re ready to download, you just download it. You'll see it pop in right there. So now I'm gonna go back to my Google Sheet. We're gonna go to File, Import, Upload, and pull that sheet in. The first thing I like to do is just organize this report. So I'm just gonna delete columns that I don't need. So I don't need start and end date or currency. Um, it depends, you can keep your campaign name. I keep everything in portfolios, that's how I stay organized. So I'm just gonna delete all of these. And then we don't need any of this because we just need customer search term. And then I like to rename these. So impressions, clicks, CTR, CPC, spend, sales, ACOS, just to make it a little smaller. And then we'll keep orders as well. And then we'll delete the rest. Okay, now what we're gonna do is organize it by orders. So I'm gonna highlight everything by clicking this button, go to data, sort range, data has headers, go to orders, and Z to A. It's gonna put my top orders on top. And then what I'm gonna do is just go down here and get rid of all the ones that are less than three orders. So next we're gonna calculate what your maximum cost per click can be. So we're gonna create three new columns, clicks to orders, maximum CPA and maximum CPC. Maximum cost per click, maximum cost per acquisition. This is just essentially your profit margin. So clicks per order is just a simple formula. It's gonna be clicks right here, divided by orders. And then we'll autofill that. And I do like to take this one out just a little bit. The next one is your max CPA, which we'll calculate in just a little bit, but let's do your max CPC. Your max CPC is just simply your max CPA divided by your clicks per order. So we're gonna take this, and we're gonna do max CPA divided by clicks per order. So obviously that will be nothing right now. So next we're gonna get rid of the ASINs. We'll deal with the ASINs at a little later, but not right now. So I'm gonna sort range again by customer search term. And you'll see all the ASINs come up in the Bs. So we're gonna grab all those. I am gonna put those in a separate sheet Come back to that search term. Now we're gonna create a filter to look at the product, a specific product. So what I'm gonna do first is highlight everything, go to data, create filter, and then we're gonna filter by portfolio name. So I'm gonna show you my tea tree oil eyelid wipes today. Okay, now we've got the search terms for the Mediviz tea tree oil eyelid wipes separated out into its own category. And you can see that most of our orders come from these top words right here. And you can see a couple of repeats, eyelid wipes right here and right there. So you can figure that's gonna be one of the 80-20s. Then you can see actually one of our own search terms creates a lot of sales. So people are actually searching for our brand name right here. But let's just look at all of these. And you can do this for all of these um, as long as they're profitable. Um, or you can just focus on the top ones. And so what I wanna make sure is that I have an exact match campaign for my top five to 10 search terms. I wanna make sure I have that exact campaign. So let's next calculate what you should be bidding on these search terms. And so that's where this max CPA comes in, and then that will calculate your max CPC. So what I'm gonna do is go over to Amazon and pull up my product. 1997 is our cost. I use Helium 10's extension, but this is just your profit. And so Helium 10's extension just makes it easy because they calculate Amazon's fees. So I'm just gonna put in our cost per goods, 
and that's going to pull up our net profit margin, so 916. And so what I'm going to do is, so this is essentially just your selling price minus your product cost minus your fees. So 916, we're going to come back over here. I'm going to put in 916 right there. It's actually going to be a dollar sign, $9.16. Then we're going to drag that down all the way to the bottom. And then this is also going to be a dollar sign. And then that's your maximum cost per click. And so with Mediviz Tea Tree Eyelid Wipes, since the ACOS is so good, we have such a, every 1.26 clicks we get an order. And so we can bid $9.16, or excuse me, $7.27, because every $1.26, we get a sale, which will be break even for us. Now for a non-branded keyword, Eyelid Wipes, you can see that we're 36% ACOS, makes a ton of sales for us. 45 orders, every three clicks, 2.93 clicks, we get an order. So we're gonna do $3.12 for that cost per click. Now you can see that it varies depending on where we're at. And so you just kinda, I, I like to go with the highest because it's just converting so well and driving so much traffic. And you, you most likely will, will break even on that search term, but it's gonna boost your ranking in the organic. So let's check that out. So amazon.com eyelid wipes. Let's see where we are in organic rank. So you can see there's our headline search ad. There's our two sponsored product ads. And then here's organic rank one, two, three, four, five, and we're sixth. And we're, we're fighting some pretty, pretty big brands here. The, these brands have been around since the nineties. And so they've been around for a while. So it's going to be hard to unseat them, especially with that amount of reviews that they have. And you can see that we have about 644. But focusing on the 20% the, the of search terms that produce 80% of your results. And so again, looking at all of these, we have 66, so that's about 13 search terms. So that will be right around here. So we'll wanna make sure that we have an exact match single keyword campaign for these search terms. And then we can go out and explore more broad once we have the budget to do so. And so after you've kinda of got all these running, then you can start to explore the next series. So you can see that some of these are repeats. So it's probably more around here. And these are the ones that I want to make sure that I have an exact match single keyword ad campaign running for so we can really scale our campaigns. All right, again, to reiterate how to structure your Amazon PPC campaigns for success, a single keyword ad campaign, start out with an exact match to start. These are your scale campaigns. If the budget allows it, then you can branch off into broad and auto for those same search terms. Upload a negative list, negative phrase list ASAP to those campaigns, your broad and auto campaigns, and if you wanna do phrase, you can too. Those are all discovery campaigns. They're discovering new search terms that you can then put into the scale campaigns, the exact match campaigns to then scale. We like to do a bid down only strategy, and then we usually like to adjust the top of search bid adjustment by about 20%. And then of course, use the calculated cost per click that we just did in that sheet. So what are your action items for this? Create exact match campaigns with the 80-20 search terms. If the budget allows, create broad and auto match campaigns with those same 80-20 search terms. And then upload your negative phrase lists to the broad and auto. Hey, I wanted to thank you for watching this video and I picked out another video just for you. So make sure you check out that other video. And what do they need to do? Do they need to like and subscribe? Yeah. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs>